All right, let's go. So for the past few weeks, I have been having many clouds and only in some rare occasions did the clouds break up and gave me an opportunity to take a look at the sky. Um, but right now, we're having clouds. I live right there in the middle of the Netherlands at the tip of the finger of this cursor. So we're having clouds, but as you can see, there's this gap forming in northern Germany and it seems to spread, breaking up the clouds above the Netherlands as well. So I hope that maybe tonight I may have a clear sky. So let's hope so. I've been able to take some photographs of M42, which can be found in the constellation of Orion. It's also known as the Great Nebula in Orion. So here we have Orion. This is, by the way, the Stellarium software. So let's zoom in with the belt of Orion. And below we again have a nice row of stars, and there you'll find the nebula. And the big glow on the bottom is M42, and the smaller glow on top is M43. So I am using, let's see, Deep Sky Stacker. So here we go, it loads in pretty quickly actually. These are my frames. I have uh, dark and bias frames, and I have light frames, which are the actual photographs. So let's load these in. Light frames. Dark frames. Yes, these are dark frames. And I have bias frames. So the dark and the bias frames are used to reduce noise in the actual light frames. And the light frames are the actual photographs of the, of the object that I've taken images of. Let's compute offsets. Done pretty quickly. And I'm going to take 80%. We are having 42 stars to align, so that's pretty good. And I'm going to use mosaics, median clipping, median, median clipping, yes. And I'm going to use sigma clipping. And OK, summary, OK. And now we're stacking, and this is going to take a minute. Now, since I'm using rather small resolution images, this is not going to take too long at all. Um, but imagine if you have a large batch of huge images, it's going to take up a lot of memory and a lot of time. And where with a lot of time, I'm talking about many hours, maybe about six or so, if you have a pretty large stack. So make sure you're doing this uh, during bedtime, because then when you wake up in the morning, you should have results. These images, by the way, were taken with a Canon uh, EOS or EOS 60D. I've been looking at trying to purchase an EL60 DA, and DA is used for astrophotography. However, it's overpriced, absolutely overpriced. So, uh, I'm gonna wait for purchasing that one. Also, I don't know how well it will perform. Um, it, it, the DA apparently is more sensitive for infrared light, which is good, which is, which is very useful, but um, I'm not sure how good it is. So. I'm waiting for reviews, but maybe everybody is thinking that and then nobody purchased the camera because they're all waiting for somebody else to uh, to purchase it first. So we're not going to get any progress that way. Now if I recall correctly, I think it was mid-April that Saturn will be closest to Earth. So I'm going to get a few pictures of that as well. Uh, we're almost done. And there we go. Now the image is a bit bright. That's not a problem. Uh, here below we have the response curve and the RGB channels. I'll just move the channels to the darker portion of the image. Not too dark. And I also want to align the RGB channels. And blue is slightly off as well. Apply. And there we go. Well, that's much better. This is kind of what I would see through the telescope when I'm using eyepieces. So it, it, it's actually white this way. You barely see any colors at all. But I can bump up the saturation a little. Let's bring it to 17%. Yeah, you can kind of see a blue and a red color coming from the nebula. So I can adjust the mid-tone a little. Uh, dim that, but brighten the light portion. And that's a bit too much, isn't it? But you can you can see the clouds better, but it's a bit too much. So let's drop it. Yeah. So so you can actually see 
a very, very, you can actually see more detail on the clouds here on the edges. Um, but it's not really a good image. So I'm going to bring it back. And there, you, there we have the nebula again. It's not too bad. So the big glow, M42, and a smaller glow on top is M43. Now I should actually get slightly more detail. There we go. So now some of the ridges here in the darker portion of the nebula are showing up. I, I don't know if you can see it on the video, but I can certainly see it here on my monitor. You can see some details, some edges showing up in dark red. Let's see if I can make the dark red portion a bit brighter by shifting the RGB channels. Now it's a little bit red, but you should be able to see more. Yeah, well, I can certainly see it. Anyway, that was the result of that session. This is taken again with only 99 photographs, which maybe some of you may think that's already a lot. Uh, but next time, <laughs> I'm going to take more, about 400. I'm going to use 400 next time and see if I can also get the clouds on top of there to show up. Which uh, didn't show up this time. So stay tuned, see you around, and clear skies.